Thanks for tuning in. I want to go back to Isaiah chapter uh, 49 and look at a few more verses. In verse number 13, he says, Sing for joy, O heavens, and exalt, O earth. Break forth, O mountains, into singing. For the Lord has comforted his people and will have compassion on his afflicted. But Zion said, The Lord has forsaken me. My Lord has forgotten me. Can a woman forget her nursing child? That she should have no compassion on the son of her womb? Even these may forget, yet I will not forget you. Behold, I have engraved you on the palms of my hands. So here's Israel and they're in despair and afflicted and in bondage and all of this was a result of their their own persistent rebellion but it's almost like in that that moment of despair and affliction that they brought upon themselves that they had forgotten God or thought that God had forgotten them you see he calls them to sing and to rejoice and because he will have compassion. That was his promise. I think that when we're going through the valley of the shadow of death, we often despair and come to the place and we think, why am I going through this great trial? Has God abandoned me? Has God forgotten me? Because when we're in those valleys, in those times of despair, it's easy to forget that God is with us in those trials. The psalmist says, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. For you are with me. Your rod and staff, they comfort me. And so a part of Isaiah's message to the people was to remember that God is a God of compassion. He's a patient God. He's, his discipline may seem severe. His chastisement may seem very painful, but it's all an expression of his love to awaken us and prepare us for the future. He says, I will have compassion on, his afflict, on my afflicted. Compassion is that he has... Um, are hurt in his own heart. When we weep, he weeps with us. When we sorrow, he sorrows with us because he is always with us. And Zion said, the Lord has forsaken me. My Lord has forgotten me. I've seen this many times in the lives of people who are professing believers, but when God doesn't do what they think he should do or they have an event or a loss in their life, they say, well, if God were loving and God were powerful, he wouldn't allow this to happen. Forgetting that quite frequently those times of despair are things that we allow to bring in our lives and that we live in a fallen world and there is evil, but God's with us. He hurts with us, he weeps with us, and he rejoices with us. Can a woman forget her nursing child that she should have no compassion on the son of her womb? Like it's unthinkable that a, a mother could disregard a child in which she feeds and nurtures every day. And then he says, even these may forget, yet I will not forget you. We understand as the new covenant children of God that he has so completely dealt with our sin so that we could be in an intimate relationship with him that we could know he is ever present. And though 
others may forget us. He says, I have engraved you on the palm of my hands. We must never forget <laughs> that our name is tattooed on the hands of God, engraved there. He will never forget. Of course, this is a beautiful picture that God wants us to remember that he will never leave us. He will never forsake us. At the worst that we think life can be, we have this promise that he's with us. He will never leave us. He doesn't promise any of us a life without valleys, a life without trials, a life without tribulations, a life without questions. But we do know that we are his beloved. We are his, ch his children and we are his temple. And he lives in us as we live in him. And God wants you to know he will never forget because he has your name engraved on his hands. I hope that encourages you. He will never forget, even when it seems like everyone else has. And that comforts me. I hope you have a great day. God bless.